this to preview for the upcoming game on Saturday the 29th of January with a 3pm kickoff as the Borough take on Coventry City in the Scarbet Championship at the Riverside Stadium. For Borough fans, our eight game on beat and run, which was a good run we had as well. Unfortunately, it came to an end this past Monday as we lost 1-0 at Ewood Park against Blackburn Rovers. You know, fair play, you know, to Tony Mowbray's side. They came at, came at us in a physical manner and they absolutely snuffed us out. Uh, didn't even give us a chance, particularly in the first half. Um, when we had, we had, you know, four players on yellow cards within the first, like, half an hour, pretty much. Yeah, there was Neil Taylor, Alan Connolly, Matt Crooks. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Um, there was probably Paddy McNair. It was, one of the, it was probably one of their four players. Yeah, them four players were all... On, um, on dodgy, like on uh, shaky ground within the first half an hour, which obviously uh, didn't want, and that put us back, um, you know, throughout the duration of the game. And um, Blackburn eventually got their reward for their hard work in the first half. In the second half, um, the so- sloppy defending from our part, you know, the miscue from Paddy McNair allowed Sam Gallagher to uh, sneak in and obviously slot the ball in past Joe Lumley, just good finish, man, you know, uh, to um, give Blackburn the lead and. Towards the end of the second half, you know, we um, had our chances, you know, to possibly even get a point or actually win it, particularly from Matt Crooks. Uh, first header from a corner was headed up, was uh, cleared away off the line by Lewis Travis. And the second one, towards the dying end of the game, could have easily sorted in, but over the bar. Um, I mean, I would have took a point at the end of the day, you know, a flat but it is what it is. And we go to this game, now we're eighth in the league. Um, Obviously, um, just a couple of points behind the playoffs, but we do have a couple of games in hand, uh, particularly the game against Sheffield United away and uh, the home game against Fulham, because obviously the home game against Fulham on that weekend, we've got Manchester United in the FA Cup, so that's been changed about, I think, to about April time, I believe. Uh, but it's a big game, it's eighth against ninth, uh, going into this next round of fixtures. Obviously, uh, as of recording, um, there's a game playing tonight between Huddersfield and Stoke, which could have ramifications in terms of the playoffs, even though it is towards the uh, beginning of February. But with Huddersfield occupying the um, final playoff spot at the moment, it could make a big difference, you know, between if we can get up to the playoff places again um, this weekend or we'll have to buy the time and wait for our games in hand to capitalise on them. Uh, but going into this game, I mean, and there's obviously like the last couple of days as well before the transfer window closes and there's no um, sort of developments at the moment in terms of incomings but um, we have seen a couple of young players go out on loan recently as of recording this. Uh, Isaac Fletcher has got the Hartley Pool on loan for the end of the season and um, also today as of recording, a few hours ago as of recording, uh, Callum Cavanagh has gone out on loan to lead two side Harrogate Town on loan until the end of the season. So. Um, not sure about the developments on Uche Piazza. I know Cardiff will probably be interested, but they're one of them on the loan deal, and we are looking for a candidate one. So it looks like at the moment Uche Piazza is staying at the bullet for now. So, and then again, it's only a couple of days before the window closes, so we have to see what happens, you know, between now and then in terms of incomings or outgoings for all the bullet. But um, I wouldn't be surprised if changes were made after the uh, draft bear performance on Saturday, because I know Chris Wilder. Was not happy during his um, post-match press conference after the Blackburn game, so I wouldn't be surprised if a couple of changes were made. And I know Isaiah Jones went off um, late on after the Blackburn game, but I hope that fingers crossed it's just a knock. So fingers crossed, like I said, um, if um, Isaiah Jones is fit to face uh, the Sky Blues tomorrow. Um, but apart from that, obviously, apart from Mark Waller being out injured and Riley McGree still an international duty with Australia. Um, bear in mind he scored a good goal for them in their current World Cup qualifier against Vietnam recently. And I think Australia got a World Cup qualifier coming up. I think it's this weekend, in fact, against Oman. So um, I don't expect to see Riley McGree make his full debut until possibly even the Manchester United game or the trip to QBR we've got coming up. So hopefully we'll see what happens then. Um, now we'll go to our opponents, Coventry City. Um, surprise, like. As we, you know, as we're calling it, I, I, I would expect at this point now to see Coventry City somewhere near the relegation in places. But no, this season has done well. And I think the, uh, you know, being back at their stadium uh, after a couple of seasons away at St Andrews has done them a world of good. You know, uh, Mark Robbins' side currently uh, find themselves ninth in the championship, as we're calling like I said. Um, the record going into this game is played 26, won 11, drawn 6, 7 and lost 6. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the right uh, accurate uh, number. 
Um, last game, uh, they won one nil at home against Stoke City. Uh, so they come to this game with good form, and they do tend to travel well. I mean, they take a good away following with them everywhere they go. I believe they sold um, just over a thousand uh, to come to the Riverside, which is good away following from them, good support. Um, and they've been doing well away from home recently as well. I think they've not lost uh, an away game in the last five in the league. So they're coming to, they're coming to this game on DV decent form. Um, as far as players go to watch out for, uh, one on the top of my head sticks out, and that is uh, Victor Gorkovic, uh, the Sweden, uh, the Sweden international striker, who's currently recently joined um, Coventry in the summer from Brighton and Old Albion. It's their joint top goal scorer at the moment with 10 goals. The other one, Matty Godden, who unfortunately will not be with the Coventry squad to come to the Riverside tomorrow, um, is currently recovering from uh, an operation of having his appendix removed, so he won't be involved in the game tomorrow. But Victor Gorkovic, and like I said, is one player to uh, to watch out for, particularly uh, going forward. Got players playing in behind him, the likes of uh, Jordan Shipley and Jamie Allen, who can possibly cause a threat. They love to play in a wing-back system as well, and three centre-backs like uh, like we do as well. Uh, but in the heart of their midfield, you've got the likes of Gustavo Hamer in, Gustavo Hamer in there, as well as Ben Sheep. Uh, they have a good central uh, midfield partnership. And the wing-backs as well, like Josh Eccles and Jake Bidwell, who they brought in recently from Swansea. And Carl McFadden, who I believe is their rock heart of their defence, um, is, is a good player in there as well. So... They're a strong side of Coventry, and they've really surprised a lot of people this season, me included. Um, as we found out as well, um, when we played them last time, back in September, at the Coventry Building Society Arena, they're absolutely dexterous by two goals to nil. I mean, I well can remember that game, they're absolutely tore us to shreds all over the park with goals from Victor Gorkovic and Martin Waghorn, giving them uh, the, the Sky Blues a 2 win that day. But we, we, both will be looking for a bounce back, um, Obviously, from the Black Bear defeat, and hopefully, you know, this game gives us an opportunity to do that to hopefully push us back uh, for that playoff push. And hopefully, in front of uh, another good, packed out Riverside crowd once again, hopefully, we'll bring back the three points and uh, continue our momentum going into the last couple of months of the season. Leave your thoughts and predictions in the comment section below, Borough fans. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, social media links to our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram will be in the description below. And until then, Borough fans, I've been Joe from Borough Fan TV, and I will see you on the next preview video, which will be for the game on Friday, the 4th of February, as Borough make the trip to Old Trafford to take on Manchester United in the fourth round of the Emirates FA Cup.